Chris Hargreaves, chance for Torquay! Chris Hargreaves, the captain! If he stays onside, Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Ben Sills! Hello and welcome to episode two of this week's Goals Eye View. So we are going to talk a little bit, not that I particularly wanted to in a way, but we just feel like we have to with the attitude around the local press, um, comments against the fans and comments from Gary Johnson. And again, just the kind of feel and the lack of this sort of blame culture on our football club. We've been, I've been saying a few times, really, all of us have been saying a lot of fans about this kind of the, the local press and it's very uncomfortable. It's this very kind of tidy thing. Um, and I, I was in two minds to bring up because I, I really don't want to be sat here start slagging people off and I hate personal like insults that people do online and just, oh, that's rubbish, what are you doing? But I just really feel something needs to be slightly addressed a little bit. Um, so, I mean, everyone's got opinions on it. First of all, I think local news reporting, obviously, it's an industry which was once very popular because of mediums of the internet like ourselves, not that we've come out to, you know, get rid of the local press or anything, but just forums and then you had more sort of like your later day sort of stuff. Um, the local press has become less and less popular and they've had to get on the line. Now, to keep their kind of link, they have to stay friendly with a football club. It, it's how it happens, how any local as local like football club, any local news thing works, uh, which makes a quite an unusual and sometimes uncomfortable relationship for those in those roles, which I understand completely. Um, but what is this unacceptable at the moment? And it's quite a right thing. A lot of people in our group and my very educated points about this, uh, which I'll try and sum up. And Tom, obviously, I'll let you in a minute, Tom, don't I? Uh, but, um, okay, mate, you keep going. Yeah, but I just I feel quite uncomfortable. So uh, so last week, um, it's almost like this need to kind of clickbait almost these online Twitter titles. So today's one was, is the negativity by talking United fans affecting the club now let's just be straight um i agree actually with a point made in the article i'm not for booing gary johnson during the game especially from winning one nil that's for another day we've said that before um because we are here to support the team at the end of the day i agree with it but i don't like this division that's happening i almost feel like almost feel, my conspiracy mind goes like local media has been told what to say by certain people and if that is even the slightest bit true i just and even like gary johnson's comments as well going back after like the Dove game or whatever. What are we doing? These people in charge of our football club, no wonder this club has failed miserably for a couple of years when we've just got loser mentality in our football club. Um, when you start blaming other people for your fortune, sometimes people can like get involved, but when it's just a sole blame, it feels like everyone's always a blame culture at Talking United. It's the bad luck of Ashton Gate. Yeah, right, that was bad luck on that day, but what's happened the last two or three years? That hasn't been bad luck. And... These people in charge of our football club with all this kind of, I don't know, just all of this sort of blame game stuff, this loser mentality. Like, I want winners in charge of my football club. I want people going, right, no, let's stop blaming the fans, local media, everyone, let's come together. And I agree, that's what kind of the article was saying today. But what is what is this all about? What is this football club becoming? It's becoming a circus. And if you look at Gary Johnson's CV, very impressive. He's, you know, he's very good at building ways and riding ways. But as soon as it's gone wrong, can he turn them around? And if this is how it is, when it's a constant blame culture, when, you know, it's always someone else's fault, it's always the rest's fault, it's always this fault, it's always that fault. It kind of was a little bit rest's fault last night, some people say. But um, I don't know, it just, you've probably got more things to add. And I've missed a few really good points there, but I'm just really uncomfortable with where this is all going at the moment i almost feel it's almost like a bit of like baits it almost feels like people these clickbait headlines just to get a few clicks because that's how it keeps them in the jobs but all these like local newspaper sites the hosting sites are always full of adverts and they're always really dodgy links on there like really weird adverts on there like just yeah i don't know if you want to add anything time i know there's been a lot of like comments on there I, why are we making this divide around our football club why is that to be a divide? Why can't it just be right? It's been bad. Let's come together. Don't make a clickbait article and put it online and be like, it's, you know, is it the fans' fault or all the negativity? Because were you actually at the games? If, if a football player can't have a bit of, I understand, no personal views, but a football player can't handle uh, what are you doing when they can see the penalty or something like that, the game's not for them. And if Gary Johnson's an out and a player, but being affected by that, 
That's not a very good man management either, in my opinion. He kind of did. Tom, mm-hmm. go. Yeah, it's um it's an interesting take um with the local media and it's one, you know, I don't you don't want to criticize at the end of the day. Um we don't we don't want it to be us as fans for everyone else at the football club and around totally the football agree. club. We should be together. We're all supporters. We all want the football club to yeah. succeed. And what seems to have been missed completely in the media the last few years is we have failed and we have dropped down back into the National League South, which for us as a football club, we thought we, certainly from a fan's perspective, we thought we'd never be back in the National League South. Yeah. That was the remit when Gary Johnson came in um, back in 2018 was to get us out of the National League South and for us to you know, never return and never look back. And yet we're back in the National League South and ultimately the standards this season have not, you know, we haven't hit the high standards that we've hoped for this season. And I get it, you know, the the media, they don't want to lose access to Gary Johnson's briefings and all that. I understand that, but there needs to be a bit of fairness here. And it's completely unfair to put the blame solely at the supporters' door mm-hmm. um, because the supporters, once again, the ones who continue to turn up, I was amazed we had nearly 1,900 at Dover, you know, for the home game against Dover last weekend. That was, you know, we are, as keep saying, we're very, in a minute. we yeah, are a loyal supporting. bunch of supporters. And, you know, I don't, I tend not to listen or read the local media online mm. these days, no, but um, just in the last few weeks, you know, I've, there's just been stuff in there, and I just think, what's what? What games have they been going to? Have they been going to the mm. same games we have? The Hereford one, perfect example, um, where the fans, our negativity on Harris, you know, affected him playing to his best potential and all that. Listen, we're all supporters once again. We want the team to do well, but when you see a player who started really well when he came in on loan, and he's just been dragged down you know in recent weeks make a silly mistake like giving away that penalty and you expect the fans to be happy about it that's not Mm. gonna happen and abusing players you know yes there were some at full time against that's not acceptable that isn't acceptable but i can understand it's building frustration fans have a right to be frustrated and they have a right to in my opinion voice that Mm -hmm. you know the fans who travel pay the money good money, take a lot of the time out of the day to go and watch and support their team. And then they're just treated to absolute garbage week in, week out. And I get it. You know, again, they want to stay close with Gary Johnson, but ultimately Mm -hmm. they're not reporting on the failures at this football club and the failures come down to him. He is accountable for a downfall. Now you can say that the owners have taken the budget away from him and all that. And yes, that's true to a degree, but Clark Osborne, whether you like him, whether you hate him, he has put the money in to keep yeah. his football club afloat one way or another. Yeah. And ultimately, the remit from when this football club got relegated at the end of April was we are going to, I'm going to stay at this football club and I'm going to, we're going to have fun next year and we're going to give it a right go for promotion. We're seventh at the moment. We've lost 10 games in the season. We are seventh in the league and the performances are just not good enough. You get away with it at home, but we have the 16th best away form after yesterday. It's yeah. no, nowhere near good enough for a club, you know, full time football club in the National League South should be better. And um, yeah, I think the local media should um, maybe not focus on targeting the fans, their yeah. displeasure at the fans, the one who actually, you know, I guess they buy the newspapers if they're still newspapers about. And it, ju- it just doesn't more. sit right with me. And no. again, the one thing I've been saying from the day one there's no accountability at this football club there's no. no remorse about what's happened and it just seems like there's a general acceptance that talk united should just be happy to be a football club in the national league south i want talk united to be back in the football league that's you know 20 years ago we got promoted to league one mm. that's the standard that i set yeah, i want that, to see talk united that, that do is well. talk united. we don't yeah. We don't want to be critical and we don't want to be doing these recordings every week moaning about oh, this. I hate it. Other, but I hate being miserable. When honestly. There's no account when there's no accountability, mm. what else do the fan what else can the fans do? It all just bottles up and sometimes emotions get really high and you get scenes like you did at Hereford, you get scenes like you had at Weston. You know, the fans are the lifeblood of a football club and when they feel left out and targeted by people inside the club and the local media inside the mm. club, in my opinion. It's wrong and it's very poor journalism and it's lazy, John. I expect much better from a professional. I expect so much better from a professional who's a lot older and all this stuff because 
it was all oh we don't read social media almost like puts down social media that everything is bad on social media of course there was an element i'm fully aware that i don't like social media much either but then to say in the same podcast that there was a certain uh talking ita fan site who was that mm, who shared the video of a full time mm -hmm. just you know that's news that's kind of news reporting really that is news just that's what news meant to be journalism if you want to call it wants to you know wants to do to kind of be like oh, don't, but also this happened and it, Someone at the football club must have told him that. Again, you know, that's just yeah. how people feel. Look at what happened with the Crystal Palace situation. Totally different clubs. Roy Hodgson, what did say? Fans are entitled to their Pass. opinions. Pass response, class about, uh, and that's Watch a veteran manager. And that's what I expect from Gary Johnson. You know, like, it's not, I hate this house versus them, but every time you fail to manage public relations, something that um, businessmen, I presume, like George Edwards and Clark Osborne, should be better at doing, we just kind of just... You know, where's all this fan club thing going happens and all that? One and... club united, that's what they yeah, one, one club united, united. yet yeah. everything that's happened, every Gary Johnson interview, it feels every um Devon Live thing, it just feels like it, you know, it's it's so ununited. It's sad. I don't like it, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. Just I I don't like going and playing more. There's a certain bit of anxiety in my mind about going and playing more. I didn't go until last minute again at the weekends. It's just because mm. I've got a season ticket and it's my football club. But certain things has put me off going. I just don't feel welcome. And mm -hmm. when you're just reading this in the newspaper, in a local Devon Live, do you think people fans are like, it's different, like Reading and all that. Do you think local news would slag their fans off like that? You know, we're your customers. You know, yeah. we, the fans are what keeps Gary Johnson, the local press in the job. If we stop going, they don't have a football club. You don't have a football club to write about. I'm totally behind part of the message that you put in our article about it's keep together do it in a different way honestly mm -hmm. i've said before especially a couple of years ago i felt fans need to be more united um at times but now it's like no, now just I, mm, on, I will say everyone of course is entitled to their own opinion of course though absolutely so i respect that but you know referring back to that podcast that i never usually listen to but once I heard some of the feedback from others who yeah. listened to it, I had to give it a listen. And mm. but for you know, for those who don't know, I actually was doing the tweeting for Hereford Away. I was the one that recorded that video at full time, and I was the one that put it out at full time. I really didn't want to have to put it out at full time, but I felt people needed to know our frustrations and to know that the performances haven't been good enough and the fan base are turning. And mm. yes, we got a lot of stick by some fan, you know fans of other clubs who maybe, you know, don't they understand the context know the full and story, what's going yeah. on inside. And that's their opinion. And that's fine. Don't mind that one bit, but not everyone was embarrassed by the video being put out. There was a, we had a lot of sympathy from funny enough, uh, quite a few people of fans who um, had Gary Johnson as a manager and know exactly what yeah. we're going through. Even yeah. Yeovil fans to an extent, not all of them. Uh, I think a lot of them are reveling in our, uh, there are Yeovil fans who generally feel <laughs> sorry for us. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I I love talking at a football club. I probably get more involved than I really should do for my mental health. But Torquay <laughs> is my only club. I don't have a Premier League club or Championship club that I follow. Torquay United is my only mm. football club that I support. So, of course, it matters a lot to me when it's things aren't going well. It's an escape to well. people. It's, it's an escape, escape for me. It's been um, my social life for 20 odd yeah. years. You know, I live down in Sussex, you know, 15 minutes from Worthing, but I've got a lot of friends down in the West Country. I've got family in the West Country. So Talk United means an awful lot to me mm. and to see it where it is now. That's why I refuse to accept the standards that we're set at the moment, because yeah. being seventh, you know, having such pitiful away form in retrospect, not good enough. The aspiration yeah. was promotion to get into the National League and anything other than that this season. Even if we do somehow do it this season, I still see the season as somewhat of a failure in that regard, just because we've really made hard work of it. And ultimately, you've got to look ahead to next season as well. Yeovil have got a crack inside that I think will do well in the National League, let alone mm. win the National League South at the moment. If we were to get promoted, so we had we'll last have time in charge. Yeah. But that's why it means a lot to me. And that's why I'll continue to report on what's going on in the terraces, because you know, whether Gary or the media want to, you know, cover their ears and not not see what's going on. Ultimately, we will. And we'll it's, never stop. That it's yellow, really, as I said, and I think we're, we're splitting two episodes. This will be the first episode just to sort of say this, because it needs to be said. I, 
my my answer because i i hate criticism without like, a solution my answer is simple right i understand where's everyone coming from you need to start having a winner's mentality back in the football club stop moaning at everything around you get playing get results out there start making us proud to come and support this football club again you know i want winners at this football club those have a privilege to, whether you're in charge of it whether you're managing whether you're coaching it whether you're playing for it, i want winners I want people with winning mentalities who just, you know, I'm not talking about this like uh, alpha man up stuff. I hate that. You've got to find a hybrid now. And this is probably why, you know, and you, you've got to have more intelligence, you know, to get the best out of people in these workplace scenarios. It's why your managers like Gary Johnson aren't strugg are struggling with the later generation of players more. Um, at maybe could be a reason, you know, you've got to have this kind of, hybrid model where it's not saying man up it's saying come on you, you know, let's work with you as an individual but you've got to be counted for you know you, you can't shell these players away they've got to go out you know play if you've got to be thick skinned to an extent not to take abuse no 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 but you've got to get out there to block it anything out and perform for your football club and your future and for your fans and Gary Johnson look I've said many times I respected you and maybe you're just doing it to take the um, way away from your players. A lot of managers have done that in the past, but the football club is not yours, mate. You've been here for five years. You've taken us up, almost took us up again, got us relegated. Doesn't matter if you did take us up, the football club's not yours, really. It was Alex Ferguson, is a, Man United wasn't his club. Arsene Wenger, Arsenal wasn't his club, even though it'd been there for like 20 years. So it's just how it goes. And just, just people at Talking United, Learn a bit of managing, you know, public backlash. Learn a bit of, you know, managing that. How to work with people, how to work with a community, which you're doing well at times. But, you know, don't just take everything so to the point and just show a bit more respect and make people feel more welcome to come back to play more and make a better atmosphere. Praise the fans more. Not just a little tweet. Oh, thank you for the Yellow Army for coming. Now, for, you know, properly make us feel the match day welcome. When people come in, smile at us. You know, say thank you for coming. How was it? Properly respect those fans and not this virtue signal. Don't just do it like the other. Oh, we're so appreciative of our sponsors and all that here and there. Properly do it because this football club has such a good community and it should be so much better. Talking United is a community football club and yeah. that's what we are. That's what we always will be. We're a small club, a way away out of everyone. That sounds like I'm putting this down. We're a smaller football club <laughs> away from everyone else um, and just. Yeah, we, we we respect better. And the local press, what are you doing? Come on now. Like, if you want people to read your stuff, don't start slagging the people that you want to attract. Yeah. And making a bigger thing it yeah. needs to be. So there you go. We'll but, see in the next episode. We're actually talking about football then. Yeah, yeah. Good. I was going to say, uh, before we do end the episode, um, those comments after Saturday absolutely floored me. I, I yeah. can't believe the arrogance of a man to have won one game in his last four or five, whatever it is, to then have the absolute nerve to say that this club is as much his as it is ours it never ever ever will be yours gary johnson never and the fact that you can arrogantly say that when you have taken the club down the division from last season to struggling this season and the to expect that the fans have a right to not be happy with how our season's gone despite the fact that we are pushing for playoffs but we shouldn't be, have to be struggling. And with all due respect, I honestly feel like we are failing look at, the remit. Look at, the, look at the four teams that have gone up, right? Four teams that have gone up. Look where they are in the National League. We're struggling to get out of this league. And we've got to improve so much to stay up in the National League next season if we did go up. This is not Gary Johnson Football Club. This is Talk United Football Club. I don't care how long you stay here, Gary. You've overstayed your welcome. Mm. But again... How how dare you? Uh, you don't have to be you don't have to be happy with the fans. That's fine. I you know I've, I've learned now long enough. You being here that you obviously don't care. You know that you've got the safest job in football, and whatever happens, you'll probably be the manager next season. But I ain't I ain't here to support you, mate. I'm here to support the football club that I've mm -hmm. followed since I was ten years old. The club that I've seen hit the heights of League One, have promotion battles in League Two, been relegated to the National League, get back out of it again. And if you think that this is bad now, if you don't get us promoted this season, 
I really, really hope you're ready for what's to come because the fans are not going to tolerate failure this season. And mm. the fact that you hide away whenever That's we lose. Bit, yeah. And, you know, the people inside the club refuse to answer the questions properly. You know, you've got the safest job in football. I but... don't understand why we have to have this everything's amazing attitude to life. Just be honest. Honesty is the best policy of this sort of thing. Um, have a bit of remorse and yeah, have some honesty. It, just, just, it's just easy to, to manage people so that, right, it's not gone well. I think we just respect things a lot more. You know, um, see that drive and idea. Ah, where's this winning mentality in this club? Nowhere. It's all losers. So that needs to change. Yeah. Chin up. Stop blaming everyone else. Get to work is what I say to everyone who uh, is in charge around that. Thanks for watching this week's Goals Eye View. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, hopefully a win at Worthing. and be less kind of more on the football pitch we can talk about next week but thank you very much for watching let us know your comments again not here to start a thing with people and i don't want a war i hate that i hate conflict i just want everyone to work together a bit more i want, I want the opposite of that so but sometimes you've just gotta cool things out you so there we go thank you for watching see you next week Here's Hargreaves, the chance for talking. He stays on side. Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Bennett. Sells!